The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Here we go, and we're looking at the Dow up 341 on this May the Tuesday, May the 17th. Uh, up 339 in the Dow, 32,563. We've already hit the 14 period moving average. That was a requisite, as far as I was concerned. If this is a real takeoff um, in the low that was made on Thursday, 31,228, <clears throat> and one of the reasons why we did go long the, uh, on the dip the very next morning is because there have been a number of accounts of the Chapman Wave Roman candle. The last one was on the 2nd of May, where I called it a semi Chapman Wave Roman candle, where <clears throat> the market opens as a slightly, uh, a little bit of a wick, and then has a big plummet to the downside, and then closes a half to two-thirds above the low. <clears throat> it did it again, and I call that a mini Chapman Wave Roman candle on the 12th of March. What am I talking about, the 12th of March? This is the 12th of May. A lot's happened in these two months. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> at 31,228. And it said, the takeoff that happens now, the last time was two bars, two days, that is, and then there was a tremendous decline, and we broke to a new low. We went all the way uh, below the 32,000 key support level, down to uh, 31,228. What's really important right now is that we have three decent green candles. I don't want to have two days and a failure again. I went three days, a bit of a pullback on Wednesday, maybe waiting for the Fed to do something, and then by Thursday or Friday, I want to see the Dow up in the 32,700, 32,800 range. And that would say <clears throat> the low that we've just made is the kind of low that says we're off. We're making a base that allows for a rally that can last a little, lot, little longer than three to five days and maybe can go for a week or two. And then we can reassess. That's all we want is to be able to reassess at higher levels, not having this failure, 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 because um, that is setting up a monthly chart pattern that would be very, very negative. So with a slightly bullish uh, point of view right now, I shouldn't say slightly bullish, I say more than slightly bullish, because we only have long positions. <clears throat> Some of them have done extremely well. Others we've just gotten into, so we can only say on a percentage basis they have had some terrific uh, bounces but the day is young, anything can happen. SPX.X, that's the S&P 500 index, up 48 at 40.55. It ran all the way this morning to the 40.70.99 level. That 40.80 area, I'd say to um, people in the den this morning when we were looking at the E-mini, I drew this in and I said, on the... Well, this is the one minute basis. So uh, we can look at this. It's gone to peak F, made an arch formation, pull back and in the uh, uh, match of the left side, right side price, time match, and then it broke below it and went lower and then sharply up to the 200 period moving average. That's the one minute chart. But this is very interesting because look, in the, yeah, we go in the 10 minute chart, went all the way to PG. We did a one-to-one -one of the rectangle formation to the upside based on this incredible support of the 200 period exponential moving average. That took you to exactly a Fibonacci expansion to actually, I call it a Fibonacci, but there's 300%. I don't know if a Fibonacci had any 300% is. I always include that. So it went almost to 300 to PG, pulls back and makes a dreaded H. And I'd said in the den that 55 that is 40.55 is going to be kind of a key support level on the sh in the shorter term, uh, certainly for the E-mini. All right, let's get back to our story because it's all related. What we're looking at now is that the <clears throat> S&P cash has pulled back. It opened at 40.52, and here it is at 40.54. So uh, that gap could quite easily be filled. There's a lot going on here, so I'm not expecting just 
the earlier move to the upside, besides being a very pleasant surprise, I think had a lot to do with Home Depot coming out with um, earnings that were surprisingly high. I made a joke saying it's a number of times I've been to Home Depot lately. Uh, it's actually been very full at any time of the day. Um, and that's very interesting. But it's given back all those gains. It gapped up at 306.50 at the open, screamed to 310.94. And unfortunately, right now, it's at 299.33. And that's the kind of story we're looking at right now, that this is a very difficult market. There are so many cross currents. And that's the reason why I say to subscribers, as we move higher, we're going to take something off on each bounce because we want to accumulate some kind of percentage gains that gives us a bit of a cushion from our fabulous entries that maybe we can have a little wiggle room. That's all I want is some wiggle room. Um, as I say, the day is, we're not even an hour into the session. The day is really young. And now let's go to the, uh, I want to just show you the QQQ at the low of the day, 302.67. Needs a lot of work. That weekly chart has a nice candle. <clears throat> But that's not good enough. Candles are candles. I mean, it's what happens after the, a candle means nothing until the very next uh, bar. And that's really important. So in this particular instance, on a weekly basis, you want to see if you're bullish, at least in the short term, on a bounce in the QQQs. And I prefer the Qs right now. The Qs are up 4.33 at 302.79, up 1.46. I actually prefer them to ARKK, which is the ARK Innovation, which has a very bu a bunch of very oversold uh, stocks. But to tell you the truth, the mix there is just, I don't like the mix at all. I'd rather be aggressively long the Qs um, than to be holding the ARKK. So we've skipped that and I said, no, nope, I'm not interested right now. And it's up 1.46, which is good. Uh, 59 at 41.63, did it 43.38. And the way it gives back is the part that really uh, upsets me. Now, I wanted to just jump over to the K CL. This is the crude oil up a dollar nine at 115.27. You remember what I said? That whole 110, 112 area is key. This is leg D. And if crude oil powers higher, we've got to watch that high that was made in the crude oil continuous contract high back in. I believe it was the end of March. March the 24th hits 116.07. Now, this is also important. A very quick peak A, then a peak B, and a peak C in the rectangle formation or the cup formation in the weekly says buyers are coming in and having enough clout to be able to move the, the crude oil continuous contract higher. It's within a rectangle formation. I don't want to make it too messy, but I now need to make it messy. So I'm putting the rectangle formation right there. It's also the lopsided cup. I call it the gravy cup because it's lopsided on one side. And then spout comes, sort of takes its long, it takes its time to get up. And now what I'm looking at is I don't know if the high of 128.60 on the 7th of March. Now, I better check because that gets smoothed out. That price could change. And it has not changed yet. 128.60, the high of the 7th of March. Are we going all the way there? That's why this is such a critical moment for so many areas. I'll be back in a moment. We want to talk about um, a bunch of stocks that I was asked about. And then we want to talk about the volatility index and what are the implications set. That was the top and tiger edition tower. I'll be back in a moment. booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Just want to talk about the fix for a moment. Then I got a bunch of cool questions uh, and I to get to. Uh, but the fix is down at 26.7. Remember, about uh, four days ago, was it three, four days ago? I said if the volatility starts to drop, that's one thing. But you really need to see it holding in the 26s to say this pattern, yeah, the dreaded H pattern. What is the dreaded H pattern? Let me just draw it for you right here. Can I find it? Yes, I can. There it is. Okay, dreaded H pattern is right here. This is the pattern that goes to a lowercase h. Remember, I'm looking at three basic patterns all the time. Straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation. Combination of one and two or one and three. Straight line down with an arch, fading at a peak A or a peak B minus, meaning that it goes below the left side low. is usually very negative because you can go quite a bit lower after that. On the upside, uh, the Y formation, the reverse Y formation, if it takes out, it's green because if it takes out that left side high in a certain manner, you can go quite a bit higher. So the three patterns are real simple. We've got a straight line. We've got a straight line down in the VIX index on the daily chart from 36.54 on the second of um, second of May. Pulls back sharply to the 50 period moving average. Bounces sharply and then goes to an A. It's a gray A because it's not over the previous high. So it's an A. I'll make it gray. It doesn't take more than a second. I'll do that. And then what does it do? It pulls back. If it takes out by one penny, the low of the fourth, 24.94, that becomes another leg down. In other words, that becomes a leg B. This is an A. That's a little mini A right there. And you, if in this move down, it takes out that left side low, that becomes a leg B. And it targets 23.7, a leg B. And if it goes anywhere close to 24.70, that 23.72, 200 period exponential moving average becomes a real target. And that becomes the lowercase h. Look right here. See the pattern? Sharp move down, arch fails at an A. Sharp move down, arch fails. In this case, I'm making it up an A. And this is going to make that left side. And what will that do? That will allow, and this is what I've been to saying to subscribers when I did my video on Saturday. I was saying, under all the conditions that I'm looking at here, there is such an oversold, um, a, a oversold condition in many, many stocks. 
that were and used to be really important stocks. And that says to me that there's a chance that they could have not just a pop to the upside, but actually a little bit of a rally. And that rally says you've got to be selective and go to the ones that used to be favorites, the ones you've had before you've had experience with, grab them, see where they go. All right? So um, that's the volatility index. If the volatility index at this particular point, I don't think it's going to go much above 30. If it does rally because the market suddenly tanks, although it'll be very disappointing on the market side. But the technicals are suggesting that that green is so close to pulling back the nine period under, underneath the 14 to go to pink, that that'll be the that'll be the signal to say the VIX just for the moment is out of the picture. To me, that's really important. OK, a couple of things I was asked about SSYS. This is a 3D systems company. Um, I used to have it all notated very nicely. We had, do we have either this or DDD 3D systems once upon a time? I think we had 3D systems. Yes. We've had them both, but 3D systems is the one that we had that had made us a huge amount of money. I think it was a, a, a more than a double. Um, so SSSYS, nice move up. It's a leg B. And this is exactly what I mean about the beaten down sector. 3D systems, although I'm from what I'm reading, there are more and more companies that are being in, are getting involved in 3D uh, 3D printing, but it is there's just no question that that is one of the 21st century um, production production facets that speeds up the whole process. So it is very important, and I like it. I didn't understand quite why it got hit so badly. Maybe it's just because I couldn't make money. I don't know what it is. But this is one that's doing uh, quite nicely. It's up at 19.41. It's up 13 percent. Actually, more than that. It's up 13 percent, up to 29 at 19.41. It made a low in the 15s just uh, four sessions ago. Hey, four points in a $15 stock. I would say that that's really impressive. Uh, but uh, over 30 percent, that's very nice. Now what we're looking at is so, and then, and then a, a question came in, uh, and the, uh, was it Tiger YouTube? about DDD systems. Um, now, I don't usually like to talk about stocks that subscribers have just got into, but once it was mentioned, I do have to talk about it. So 3D systems is trading up $10.71, up 63 cents. Uh, it's good. It's over the nine period moving average, but absolutely, it has to break. Uh, 1088 was the high today. 1098 is the 14 period moving average until these two stocks in this particular field start to trade. They can't just have pops like this. Uh, they get they fail. Very look, it went to a peak B before, and that was uh, beginning of May, and then it plummeted. It went to lots of peak A's and failed. It went to a peak C with a big dreaded H pattern, lowercase h. It failed at a peak C, and that that really was a big failure after that peak D high back in March, uh, up in the 20, uh, 19 area. So this is just the start of an attempt. And if you look at the weekly chart, it is horrible. So I'm just going to suggest to you that uh, within the context of the rotation, the favorability rotation, in other words, the stocks that had been really decimated, this went from 56 down to 8 um, DDD systems, February of 2021. Um, they deserve a balance. Of course, the market doesn't know anything about deserving, but just on a moral <laughs> basis, they deserve some kind of a balance. And how they take that balance is going to be, is this a major buy? I just don't think these things are at major buys just yet, but certainly on a short-term basis, they could have pretty decent rallies. All right, enough with that. COP was a question. That is, um, COP is ConocoPhillips, multinational oil company, Trading near its all-time high right now, 107.51. I had a round number close. Yeah, you know, in this, we, we've seen these round numbers. I can just tell you this. I would put more regard into um, the pattern itself than the, than the round number. If there was a pattern from here on in the next day or two where you've got a round number, in this case, let's just say it pops to 108. That's an all-time high. And then as an immediate reversal, it goes to 105.50 within three days. I would consider that, number one, the chance that it's made at least a short-term top 
And if the 108, I'm just making up a number, would be very important because if it's taken out, it can actually go quite a bit higher. So that's your level to watch. On the other hand, I would not be looking at shorting any of these, uh, anything in the oil sector. It's just, besides being too dangerous, crude oil um, isn't letting go. It is still constantly in demand. It's holding near the highs. So I wouldn't be messing around with these things. But as a long-term buy and hold, it, for some of you, you've been in it for a while. I know some of you have been in, in these oil sector stock. I would do this. As it's going to new highs, I think just in terms of money managing, man, money management, now if you were really aggressive and it was just up to you and you had nothing to worry about, this is where some of the really big heavies would double up and double up as it was going to higher highs. I'm saying no, you want to conserve as much money as possible. Use this as a, as a treat to say, hey, at a high, I'm going to get take a little. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're looking at uh, the Sting, S-T-N-G. Oh, I didn't finish this. Sorry. COP has just to speak to a new... COP which is Conica Phillips just squeaked to a new all-time high. Was that, I don't know if it's an all-time high. I think it is. Uh, oh, wow. This is, I think it's an all-time high. Anyway, whatever the high is at 107.09 right now, that's a leg F in the weekly, I'm sorry, in the monthly. Now, the weekly, just for the moment, I'm calling it a brand new A, B. I, I, I think it's really more like an F slash A and a G slash B. I don't have to worry about that right at this moment. But what I am going to tell you is that it squeaked a new high. I'm calling this an E in the uh, daily chart. And I'll show you something very interesting. C Why does it always bounce to that thing? CVX, which is Conica Phillips, just made a new all-time high. E in the weekly. Uh, is this a possible F in the week? 
sorry, E in the monthly, F in the weekly, and a D in the daily. So I'm looking at this, and I it seems to me that there's a chance on a very short-term basis, and I'll, I'll go to gold in a moment because there's, there's a, and the dollar, there's, there's kind of a relationship I'm looking at here that if it works, it tells us one thing. If it doesn't work, it tells us another thing. So you see the double top here, the MACD. This is kind of this is Chevron, uh, multinational oil, and you see the way the MACD turned up, and the stochastics at seventy nine percent. The on balance volume is just a tad overbought, but the other two are actually moving in sync very nicely. The nine period is way over the fourteen. So I, 174.54 was the high that was made around about the 18th of April. And if I do a vertical line right now, you'll see that the technicals are, in fact, way, way lower. But they, they aren't really negative. So I'm saying I'm going to be watching this for the, for the next, uh, next day or two because ExxonMobil, same thing, made a new all-time high right now. Uh, not an all-time high, at least a near recovery high. The high today is 92.43. Leg. Now, is this an A, B, E slash C, or a, and an F? I'm going to put an F now to be as conservative as possible in the weekly. I'm go I've got an F in the uh, monthly, and this is a, a a double top. Is it a brand new A, F slash B, and a G slash C? I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm going to put both counts. And what it does is, oh, yeah, it's all very well to have a technique that says you could go up and you could go down. What's the use of a technique like that? No. What it's telling me is everything's still positive. It's made a new a recovery high. It's above the rectangle high. It is a V-shaped pattern. I can draw the vertical lines right here and tell you that at this peak F top round about May the 2nd or 3rd, and the, the doji candle we've got right now, the technicals are um, weaker than they, than they were then. But the but 90 is still way above the 14. So that says you don't have to do anything right now. If you're along these particular, I would not be putting a brand new position on right now in the multinational oils. Maybe in some of the oil service stocks, but not yet, not, not this time. At the same time, the question about USO came in, which is the um, United States oil fund. Now, I've had a couple of these charts, not enough to make it like I've got a new technique or anything. It's a technique I've always had, but I'm going to make a big deal about it. I, I, some of you will remember way, way back, I haven't watched this for a year, for years, maybe decades, uh, the, the Simpson ha hairstyle. You know how that spike, you got those spikes, it looks like a like a, an uppercase M with all those spikes or a W. Well, these patterns sometimes unfold, and they often unfold within the context of a rectangle formation. So what we've got, you've got the low in USO, which is the United States Oil Company, around about the, 20, or the 14th or so of um, March, and then it goes, peak A, pulls back. This is your starting point. This is your up arrow right here. So whatever happens, this is the level that you have to consider. If you take this out, you have to restart any buy signal. So this low in the USO of 67.73, let me type that in, 67.73, that says that every, every peak after this, you remember that's the rule of the Chapman wave, count every peak and every trough, because this, that Chapman wave is, is the waveform that never sleeps, is important. So there's your peak A pulls back, there's another peak A. Wait a minute, there's another one lower down. And he has another one even lower down. So what it says is it doesn't matter because if you go above any time you've made this peak A and you go above it, that's going to be a B. But wait a minute, there's another pullback and another A and a B and then finally goes to a C. And then you get the Chapman wave overlapping wave that says, aha, now you, can, you should go not just to a C, but to a D. Well, we've just gone to a D. In the rectangle formation, when you go to a D above the rectangle high, even if it isn't the, all, the high of the major high, that was the USO high of the 8th of uh, March at 87.84. Remember, that's when, the, um, that's when crude oil made its high. This says, just be a little careful 
because you could pull back into the rectangle. I'm not once again. I, I don't want to talk short or anything. Like that. I'm just saying a pullback to to re maybe restart for another big move up. But that's just saying to me when I put the whole package together. Yes, you've got a rectangle in the weekly that says, oh, peak A, B, and leg C. In a very quick motion, you could go to a D just under, or right at, or just above the previous high. But this is working a little too hard to do it. So I'm saying, and, and that was about, about four or five questions about, uh, about the oil service and about the stocks within it. So that just says to me, now's the time to be a little bit careful. Yes, we have an oil service that we were lucky to get pre-market yesterday. And some people managed to get it. Um, and now it's up very sharply. Since, since then, it's up very sharply. I'm just watching this scans and saying, OK, you're good right now. And what I've said is it hits certain points, raise the stop or take a little bit off, etc. But we've got to be really careful because this market is still highly vulnerable. If you look at the a UNG, which is the natural gas, natural gas is at a really big move. It's got the same pattern. Went to a peak F. It's pulled back. It's full the gap, actually. And it's trading at 28.50. This is the United States Natural Gas Fund, up $1.10. And that just says to me, wow, natural gas is still in play, holding very nicely. And this is one that could stay in a rectangle so that if it had to pull back towards the 28 right now, if it pull back towards the 26 or 25.50 area, is this where you want to buy it? Because it's in the rectangle. It could just trade between the bottom part of the rectangle to the top part. So I'm watching all of these things. And the irony is, a lot of the time, historically, we've seen when natural gas goes up, oil prices, crude oil pulls back or vice versa. The other thing is, this is the time where natural gas usually has a hiatus. This is where it's made its top and it just sits out months, months and months before it comes back again. Not this time because of the shortage. So all of these things are in play. And that's the reason why I'm saying, don't think of a shorting. You want to be adding or you want to take a little bit off and put it back and a little bit off and put it back just to, to build up a kitty because it, they, they might be stuck in a trading van. So that's that's what I wanted to cover. Uh, next question came in. Uh, if the dollar pulls back sharply, would EEM be the place to go to? And that's the EEM is uh, the, there we go. EEM is the Emerging Markets ETF. Had a very nice bounce gap up today. It's at 41.12, it's up uh, 80 cents. It made a low at about 38, around about 38 just four days ago. Three points, it's a nice move up. But the monthly chart is saying, and the weekly chart is saying, it's a lot of work. I'll be back in about 1,000. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. A uh, question of the day is GPI. Well, actually, the second was I'm getting ready to show GPI. So GPI is, uh, G, uh, oh, this is Group 1 Automotive. Let me just check AZO. I haven't updated that for ages. I, we had a fantastic short once with AZ, AZO, and then the earnings came out, and it dropped 100 and something points. It was really amazing. Yeah, you know, I'm doing a little bit of work right now. I'm trying to do a little bit of research and stuff on what exactly is going on and what how the dealers are and what, they, what they've got in, in stock, etc. So the idea that um, the... Automotive companies, ASIO, AutoZone, uh, what was it, uh, AAAP? Oh, I used to have these all notated. AutoZone, A, B, C, D, E, F in the in the monthly chart might become vulnerable as the um, as cars become available and people stop taking their cars in for for all the all the repairs that you have to do holding your car longer than you want. Um, I think you, you're you right. I just don't know about the timing. I I don't know. I, I have a tough time saying that this is an area I want to short right now. But I will tell you this. If you are going to short, what you want to see speed to the downside. 170, it's a 184 GPI. 176 is the 200 period moving average. It's been fantastic support for uh, almost a month now. I do have to see it close under it, and that'll turn the weekly chart, which has just gone to an L, which means that the nine period just crossed positive. That would flip it back into the S for the sell. And I, all I can say to you is you need to see 174. Is it 183? 174 with speed and any bounce uses the 176 200 period moving average as a repellent, so it immediately pulls back and makes a lower low. That's the only way. But if it, to me, I just think sideways for now, in about three weeks' time, I wouldn't be surprised, or two weeks' time, I wouldn't be surprised if I totally agree. So that's that's just, this is my own way of thinking right now. Now, I know that you've done these things and the next day does exactly what you want. So all I'm going to say is, um, I, I, that's just my opinion. And, and um, Nike has given back all the gains on the day. It did make 105 round number low. Uh, four days ago, it hit 108, 117. That's a damn good move on a very short-term basis. And it did try to fill the gap. It did fill the gap, but it hasn't closed the gap. No, it hasn't closed above the gap. And that just says there are just too many stocks that are in this area that says they could have decent rallies, but their major thrust of the downside has not formed the kind of base that says, all right, now we're done. Now we're going up. Um uh, let me just see. Okay, I, I, someone asked me, would I just go to gold? Yeah, gold on this particular moment is up six at 1820. So it didn't get to the nine period moving average, and it's underneath the 14 period moving average in the in the weekly chart. But look at the weekly chart. So this is a pattern we've seen in the GDX, and we've seen in gold. A pattern that I talk about very often is this is called 
This is called the falling axe formation, where prices run up, and then what happens is they suddenly start to make lower highs and lower lows, then they form a base, and then they break that trend line, the downtrend line, the upper downtrend line significantly and go quite a bit higher. Well, you can reverse that as well. It's upside down. You can come down, 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 and then make higher lows and much higher highs, and then all of a sudden stall, and that says watch out because you could come back and retest that left side low like the dreaded H. Well, look, that's exactly what happened in, the, in gold uh, back in uh, March, to, uh, March to, to June and July, and it's happening again here. And that just says to me, Gold is not ready for prime time. That doesn't just say that the dollar is going to take the lead, continue taking the lead and move significantly from here. It just says, you remember I said Goldie, Dolly, Vixie, Bondi, and Oily. Think of them as five separate things because you're, you're, when you look at the charts, you'll find that each one is in its own world. There was a, a point where the, the relationship was amazing. But look, here is the dollar goes to 105 from the from even just the most recent low at about 100. This is a big deal for, for the dollar. It's made some kind of a short term, the near term, I should call it top. It's got this huge thing in the weekly with a cup formation that says, wow, breaks out and goes above it. And this is the fourth week uh, above the 102.99 high. Let's give it until Friday. If it can hold above 102.99 for this entire week and close above it, that's a that's a really positive. If it closes under, it says, all right, now it's a timeout, and we'll see what happens. But I am saying think of them a little bit more separately and not not to be tied to it together. And that's just the way I'm I'm talking about. And it's only a leg C in the monthly chart. Dollars should still go to a leg D. Now, the other thing that we were talking about, a question came in about, oh, where did it go to? Um yeah, uh, Cody says gold and S and P, and the correlation with the dollar. Uh, it's only big in relation to what you're looking at, but in fact, um, this is not normally what they do. So that's just my my thinking. Could be wrong, but that's just my thinking. Now the other other aspect is why can't we also treat it as a leg B up? Uh oh, what was that? Uh, USO, USO leg B up, USO. That's United States oil. Oh, here? Yeah? No, this is not. This is a leg D. This is a, it's called it's a multifaceted buy signal that gives you numerous restarts and then eventually you go to your D. That's what I'm looking at. If that's what you asked me, that's what you're looking at. Um, yes. Uh, let me just go on. CRM, this is salesforce.com. Uh, it just it can't get out of its own way, and that's why I'm saying I'd, I'd be real careful. We, we, we are along the queues in a certain manner, and we've, we take a little bit off. I'm not afraid to do that. And if we have to get back in, we get back. If I have to step away, I'll step away. All I'm saying is it was extremely oversold. I, want to, I prefer that to the ARKK. And look at these stocks. I mean, Salesforce.com, always sp spoken about as a leader in, in the cloud well, now there's a lot of competition in the cloud. Look at Hack. Um, Hack is the cyber security. Even that hasn't been able to hold a gain here from a, a leg D to the downside around about 44, bounces to the 48 level, and now it's just stuck. This is cyber security crowd, CRWD. Look at that, same pattern, looks the same way. Um, something's wrong in this sector. It's been wrong for quite a while. Why the, the cybersecurity stocks aren't at all-time highs and pushing high and leading, I just don't know. When everything we look around tells you, oh, cyber is here to stay and it's getting worse and worse. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I explain it. So we just have to step aside. Uh, let's just go on the questions here. Uh, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Yes, this is very interesting. Merck. Uh, made a, a new recovery high. It's actually, I think, an all-time high at 93.10, up 79 cents. This is very good action. And uh, it's a leg E in the weekly chart. I'm calling it a leg D in the, in the monthly chart. Uh, Pfizer, PFE, also doing, it was doing very well, but it's coming, doing very well from a much lower level from the 200 group. The average having been in the 56s. It's now 51, having touched 47 recently. So that all the different things.
Well, I'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market it's real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello everyone, Basil Chapman, and uh, this is the Tag Your Conditions Hour. I believe, so Larry's doing this, uh, should be a fan. <laughs> can you imagine a market like this? Larry must be having a fall with uh, uh, his, all his attendees and his uh, webinar going on right now. Uh, I'm sure you, you could even join right now and then listen to the archives. should be fabulous. Um, my, my show, I believe, is going to be replayed. But most importantly, what I wanted to say is, look, let's make it as simple as possible. You've had this big move up. You had the gap. You've, you, you've pulled back. And now, so I always like to think of the day as either two sessions or three sessions. I also like to think of the day starting somewhere around 6.30 in the morning. We've seen that for months, that if you got a low at 6.30, you can actually sometimes hold it all the way through, a long position all the way through to the close, or if you got the high, you could hold it all the way through to the low. This is a, now we're looking at a much choppier period, and I think that the bias right now is that the tide is trying to turn up. How long it can last is really important. Let's just go back one more time um, I believe, as I say, I, I, think, I think my show might be replayed in Larry's hour. Uh, but most importantly, what I wanted to say is within the context of the VIX index, uh, VIX.X, there we go, um, it's down at 27. Remember a little a while ago it was in 26s? If the VIX index rallies above 28.50 between, oh, one, two, between 150, that's 10 to 1 Eastern time, and 20 past 2, 
that's going to put a lot of pressure on the market into the close. But if it suddenly starts to pull back and goes to the water, 26, the low today is 26.49. If it takes out 26.49, the big surprise will be rather than dropping into the close, there's a really strong rally. I want to see this down candle either today or tomorrow. I want to see it close above 30,070 or at least by Friday. I want to see that just to say, yes, and the rally that has a in the way of legs to the upside. Have a wonderful day. Check out the video. And great day.